Have you ever wondered what it would look like if you did the same exact photo in four different ways using different techniques? Well, you're in the right place. That's what we're getting into today. So thanks for joining. Now let's get into it. All right, so the four different techniques that we're gonna be doing are lights on HDR photos, lights off HDR photos so you can see the difference, and we're gonna do lights on and lights off with a flash. This flash is a little bit overkill for this small room, but that's what I've got today, so that's what we're doing. <laughs> oh yeah, and for one of the flash shots, I'm gonna do a window pull so you guys can see that as well. So this is my living room. It's actually pretty dark. I'm just using this for my lighting to get my shots lit up nicely. So I'm gonna set it up somewhere like this. So it's kind of like you're sitting there in the living room. I think that'll be a nice shot. All right, so to do quick HDR, we'll just go into here and we're gonna set this to plus two, negative two. We're getting our exposure lined up for the middle exposure. So using that histogram and now we're just gonna do this. Okay. This room has no overhead lights, so it's pretty dark. But you can see that changes the coloring of the room kind of a lot because there's no orange tint anywhere. So now we're just dealing with daylight only. Okay, so now hit the trigger. It's a long last shot. <laughs> okay. All right, so that looks pretty good. Now we got to do the same thing with flash, with lights on and lights off. And it's gonna be really interesting to see how they look in the edit. All right, we got our flash trigger. And we got our flash. Okay, so that's my settings. Turn off the flash so I can see the preview better. So this is how I like to do my windows. I'll just set it to where it's pretty bright, but not overexposed. And check those lights too, make sure that they look pretty good. And then we're just gonna shoot from there and add flash to where it fills in the room and gives it a nice, natural, soft look. Okay, so since these walls are kind of yellowish, um, I'm gonna use a reflector so that I can bounce the flash off of something that's actually white and neutral. So, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put it up here and bounce it. So by bouncing it off the reflector, you get the most accurate colors. Uh, it's not always the most practical thing, but it does work really well. And if there's no wall or anything to bounce the flash off of close by, like I would normally do, um, it creates kind of a bigger soft surface so your light ends up being nice and flattering. We're going lamps off. All right, so if you wanna add the window view, here's all you need to do. We're just gonna set the exposure to where nothing is overexposed. You can see through the window. There's not a ton of a view right there, but you can see through it. And then we're going to do the flash directly at the window at a higher power. So plus two, and that should work. So that'll expose it to plus two. All right, so two, 10 second timer. We got the flash. I'm literally just going off axis from the camera and that should probably cover it. <laughs> the goal is to get it brighter than the window is on this one. So might be fine. I'm going to try it at plus one and see if that helps. All right. Okay. All 
Alright. Yeah. So one of those should work. There's my hand. <laughs> All right, so one of those should work. Basically, the goal is to get the exposure of the window blinds to where it's brighter than it was on the normal layer. And in Photoshop, that makes it to where it's easy to subtract it, basically. And then you can pull in the window view in like a couple clicks. I've got another tutorial on that. So check that out if you're interested in more information. All right, so let's edit these photos. <laughs> So I already merged the HDR photos and I deleted all the ones that didn't quite look good. So these are the best ones to compare. So quick, quick edits. I'm just gonna do my presets. Not trying to plug my presets, but this is just what I would do. Let's go enter HDR daylight. Let's click something that's white and let's lower down that exposure. Okay, so pretty easy. I'm just gonna up a couple settings, fix the contrast to where, I want this darker stuff to look nice and dark, and I'm gonna slide my black slider to where up here, it hits the black all the way, okay? I'd say that looks pretty good, and we might just wanna remove a little bit of that blue color cast. So you could fix it a little bit, like take out a little bit more of the yellow, but I feel like that just kind of kills the wall color too much. So I'm gonna leave it like that. And I'm gonna go ahead and fix the rotation. It's a little bit off and go down here and fix the transform tab. So I'm just gonna fix that alignment with the door frame real quick. All right, so that looks good. Now we're gonna copy this over to the other HDR photo. So you can see immediately how big of a difference that color changes. And now we're gonna redo that white balance on the same thing. So the TV console that is white. And now, look at that. <laughs> Big difference. All right. So just doing the white dropper on something that's white. And actually, since we're not, this is not HDR, we can change the settings a little bit. So there's before and after on that one. All right, so this should copy over right away. Now we're gonna do the white balance again. And so one thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and add a linear gradient up here because that's the flash was hitting that part a little bit more, so the color's a little bit extra cold looking from the flash. So I'm gonna warm it up a little bit, raise the temperature, and lower the exposure just a little bit. All right. So then I'm gonna do that same thing on this one. Linear gradient, that's what it's called. Just a quick fix. Super, super easy. All right, so that's it. That's all I would do for editing. And now I'm gonna do copy these settings over to this one. You just wanna make sure that the blinds are brighter in this layer and that you can see through the window in this layer. So I'm gonna change the settings just a little bit. Okay, so it looks pretty bad right there, but it should look really good once we do it in Photoshop. So I'm just gonna export these real quick and then pop them into Photoshop to do a couple tweaks and then we're gonna compare them. So let's start with this one. So I think it looks pretty good. All I would do is go in and do dodge tool, make that bigger, change this to 10%. Basically I'm just gonna even out the exposure a little bit I think that looks pretty good. Next one. All right, so same thing. I'm just gonna do dodging a little bit. Even out the lighting just a little bit. Uh, pretty good. So if you shot it correctly, this is all you have to do for window pulls. It's super easy. Just go in here. 
click on the window pull there and then go in here and change this to darken. And that's it, then your window view is there. All you have to do is add a layer mask and delete everything else basically. So you could do this however you want to. Click M and then go to fill and fill it with black so that it cuts it out of the mask. And that's it, there's the window pull. <laughs> okay, so now I'm gonna go in and do my dodging again, just like on the other one. I'll pretty much always do this on the back corners because that is typically hard to reach with your flash and it ends up being kind of shadowy. So I like to bump up the exposure just a little bit to where you don't have a dark pit in that end of the photo. <laughs> okay, so now we just go flatten image and save. Boom. And we're just gonna do that exact same thing for this next photo. Okay. <laughs> looks pretty good. I'm not sure which one I like better with the lights on or lights off for this shot. Some shots are gonna look better with the lights off, some shots are gonna look better with the lights on. All right, so that's it. Real quick edit on all the photos, so I'm not going super, super crazy with anything. And I'm curious to see which one you guys think looks better. Let me know in the comments uh, which shooting style might work best for you and your comfort level with photography. Let's check them out. All right, so first let's look at these HDR photos. Um, I think I really like both of them, honestly. The biggest difference you'll notice is the wall colors are gonna be a lot more accurate and true to life. Same thing with flooring and furniture. So if that's a really important selling feature for real estate or interior design or something, uh, it might be the best option to go with lights off, honestly, because color accuracy is really important in those industries. Okay, and that's exactly why I really like using flash, because you can control the color consistency with lights on and with lights off. As you can see, it doesn't really change too much, like the furniture, the flooring, the wall paint color. It stays pretty consistent, even with the lights on, and you definitely get a lot more control over the light quality and softness in your final edit. I think if I had done the flash a little bit further away or on the right side of the couch, it probably would have ended up being a little bit softer and you wouldn't have that shadow on the plant. But for the example purpose, I think it still works and it's still good to see. All right, so now looking at all four together, you can really start to see some of those differences a little bit more. And I think honestly, my favorite might be the HDR without the lights on because you get those natural shadows on the back end of the couch and it's the easiest way to shoot. You don't get as much control over the window view with HDR, but uh, I think sometimes it works really well. I think the flash shots do look a little bit more vibrant and colorful. So those are definitely all things to consider when you're choosing which method to shoot for your projects. All right, that's it. Let me know which one you liked best. And if you end up trying out any of these methods, I'd love to see how your work's turning out. And if you have any questions, make sure to leave a comment and I'll help you out as much as I can. If you're new, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell to turn on your notifications. We've got a lot of cool stuff coming up that you don't wanna miss out on. And if you wanna learn any more of this stuff in depth, make sure to check out more of my videos on YouTube and make sure to check out my course if you're interested in learning in that form instead, uh, a little bit more in depth and more thorough than YouTube type content. But anyways, that's it for this one. Thanks so much for being here and I look forward to seeing y'all in the next one. Peace.